Hi everyone, welcome to the Kiryop channel. I'm Rafael Lima and today I'm going to show you how I use the CLI to validate uh, some, of the, some of the APIs that I had in my work to help me find a, a test data to do some manual. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive notifications of my next videos. And I'm also going to be posting the links of the previous one so you can check it out. So let me show you exactly, explain to you what was the use. So I had a service A, that was my service, and I had service B, which was another service that I did not have control over. My service A would send a ID to service B and a request with an ID to service B. Service B would get that ID, would do some calculation and would return that calculations to my service and my service would do a bunch of things. The problem was I did not have visibility of service B. I had, uh, so what, I, what I, uh, I was doing was I was getting a list of uh, IDs from the database from service A. So I say, okay, I have a list of these IDs from the database. So I had a bunch of IDs, but I didn't know which those IDs were valid on service B. I had access to service B database, but service B also called other services that I didn't know which service it was. So it was not only a matter of checking service, uh, the database of service B to see if that ID was there. So uh, I, what I ended up doing was I created a script on the CLI that would call service B and would check if there was a valid request uh, or not. And if it was valid, it would store that information. Uh, and then I, I would have easily a list of valid IDs that I could test this, uh, those services on an end-to-end -end, uh, perspective. And that helped not only me, but the whole team in an in incredible way. Right, so let me show you how I did that. Right, so we have here, uh, we have Wiremark running. No, it's not running. So let, let me start the service. So I have Wiremark running. So localhost, I have Wiremark running. And uh, this is the video that we created uh, last time. And I'm going to post the links for this video. And oh, so we already started creating the, this is the code that I executed, right? So now I'm going to create a validator, validate command here. And also on the top, so I'm going to just copy and paste here, make, makes my life easier. Cool. So this is a validator of a list of IDs, check which ID is available in the API. And I receive a list of IDs, one line per ID. One ID per line. Cool. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to, uh, basically I'm going to say, I'm going to get the IDs file. And this is going to be two, and I'm going to save. I'm going to log IDs file so I already know what's happening, what I'm receiving IDs file. And I'm going to call the validate API data, and I'm going to pass the IDs file. Cool. Now I'm going to, I don't need this. I'm going to create a function. That's going to get the local, it's a local variable ID file. I'm going to log here to great. Cool. Now, what I'm going to, what I need to do, I need to transform a list. So let me create the list of ideas. I forgot the list of ideas. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 
and 10. So now I have a list of ID. Cool. Um, so I need to transform this list into an array. And if you are, if you're following up the, the videos, I use a command called IFS to do that, but there is another command called map file dash T and I pass the, the name of the, our, the variable of the arrays and I read the file like, right? So this is the file that's going to send all the data to the, this array. Now I can do a for and I can say for ID in, in the array of IDs. Do done, and now I can say in CN and say checking ID ID. So let me execute the command bb validator at the ID file. Oh, if I pass a wrong file, it's not going to execute. Oh. Now I'm checking, I already know that I'm checking the ID, and it's important that. I, I do this, I pass, I, I, I spit out the information into my terminal because uh, I can execute this, this CLI when I, I'm going to, the lunch, to lunch or to a coffee or to a meeting and I'm going to have all the information whenever I come back. However, I might need that information right away. So if I don't spit out the information that I'm going to need to wait for the CLI to finish, so I can have access to whatever it happened. So uh, right in this way, I can in an instant check what's happening and what are the IDs that are valid or not. Cool, now what I need to do is I need to create the URL, right? And my URL, it's, it's a host, which is the, uh, wiremark host HTTP localhost 8080 and the endpoint, which my endpoint is slash users, slash users, slash. So my URL is going to be host endpoint. And ID. I'm going to log this URL. URL. So now, if I execute this on debug, I have the URL here. Cool. So now I need to call it. And how do I call it? And I, I do a curl command. So I need to do a curl here. So if I do curl and so what was the URL? DB uh, yeah. it was if I do a curl and this is going to return uh there is no ID value, sorry. I do curl for is going to return this. I do not want this. I want only the HTTP code. I just want to check if it was 200 or not. So I can also do specify that I want to get. I, if I do a post, does not have, cool. but I don't need to put get. What I want is the, HTTP code, and this is how I do it. I pass w, w which is going to format uh, to, a, to whatever I want, and I want the code, the HTTP code. Now I have the HTTP code 200. I do not want 
the body so i can discard the body and this is the output this is what i do with the output and i want to discard it so it's just i send to dev node so i discard it however now i get the the stats of the communication so i also discard that passing s for simple and now i only have 200 right? so i can get this and i i can say here http response and i got the code i'm going to spit this out http status uh, so it's going to look pretty now i can validate right i can check i can do if http response is 200 then i do in green valid id else in red invalid id and i close my all right cool so let's see how that's going to look like bb test api bb test api validate ideally get ideally validate oh all right so everything is valid because i hard coded the url so i need to use the url that i construct bb there you go so now we have checking id the status if it's valid or not but it's hard to, to know which one it reached i also want to know how far down the file i am so i'm going to put a counter here so i'm going to say count zero and i'm going to count here count is count count plus plus that's how you count in shell cool and now i'm going to say in cn and i'm going to say process count out of the list the array list so this is how I access the array, and this is how I count the array. Cool. So now I have a count, but I would like to separate. I have one extra here. I would like to separate which which one is which. So I'm going to do another instian, and I'm going to separate. There you go. So now I have a nice block and I know which information is which, right? Cool. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is, it's nice, I have a list here, but like, I would like to have a file. I would like to, at the end of the execution, instead of going through my, my log, I would like to see a list of only valid files. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a valid, ID file and this is going to be on my temp folder every unix has a temp folder my temp folder valid id dot text cool and now if it was successful i'm going to echo the id that was successful to the valid file 
I can pass one greater than or two, right? So I'm going to pass two and I'm going to show it to you what's the difference. Uh, passing two, now I'm going to do a cat on my temp folder valid ID file. So I executed twice and I have a list of two folders, two, two executions. If I only put one greater than and I execute it again, when I do a cat, it's going to get only the last file, the last execution. One greater than is going to override everything. I do not want to override. I want to have a list, right? So now I have a list of execution. But I would like to separate which execution was what, right? So I can delete the file and I can say valid ID file delete delete the file that's one option right, so I, when i execute it deletes only have one execution so i know that my last execution was a successful execution or i can add a data stamp i can call the data command here the date command and i can say date to the valid ID file, and I could say in CN also. A separation here. On the top. So in this case, I'm going to execute twice. I'm going to get it. And you can see that there is a, a block, so let me execute once more. Why? Uh, oh, because I'm deleting the file. So let me not delete it. Execute once more. There you go. So now I have multiple execution. Let's make me let's make it bigger. So now I have a separation of when there was executed. Uh, it's up to you what you prefer. Um, I I prefer to delete the file because I don't have to remember when when was the last execution or not. Uh, I just make sure that the last last one is the one that I executed. Uh, I don't care about the rest. I just re-execute and I'm going to get a new set of data so, so you can see that this is a very powerful tool there is over i don't know 30 a little bit more 30 33 34 lines of code just for this function and this is a very powerful thing you you in a nutshell you can have access it can take you a little uh some time to get to this final version especially if you're doing this for the first time but once you have this Imagine the amount of time that you are saving every day, not only for you, but for whoever is also testing that in your team. So it's an incredible amount of uh, time saver. You can you can add that to your only com to your computer as a script. But if you put on a CLI, if you push to the repository, everybody is going to have access to that, and everybody is going to be able to benefit from this this script. So that's it. That's basically what I wanted to show you. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive notifications of my next videos. If you like it, give the thumbs up. And it's really important that you do because that's how the channel can keep growing. And I'm going to see you on my next video.